Hello, my name is Tina from Victoria Designs. Halloween is kind of on its way and I couldn't resist having a new Halloween-y type kit designed for you. The Edgar Allan Poe kit. This kit looks intriguing and a little bit scary at the same time and I love it. With these principles, Katya from Lunar Sun Creations made a tutorial for an amazing album with lots of secret places. She also explains how to make a magnetized swing cap closure. I was so impressed that I already used this trick in one of my own tutorials that's coming out in a few weeks. Oh yeah. Like always, you can use totally different printables and papers to make this project. Just as you can use the printables from this kit to make many other craft projects, this is just one beautiful way of using them. In this video first, there will be a flip through of some of the printed sheets of this kit and also a flip through of the whole album. And after that, Katya will completely explain how she created this album. If you'd like to see more of Katya's beautiful crafts and crafty experiments, go check out her channel, the link is below. And if you would like to make this project or other projects with the printables of our beautiful Edgar Allan Poe kit, you can discover it in my Etsy shop, just follow the link and you will get more information. And now here's Katya, enjoy! Okay, so let me show you the um, Edgar Allan Poe paper collection that we'll be working with today. So these are all the background papers, the full sheet images and um, repeating patterns, etc. Some really nice deep dark color scheme. I really quite like it. I really like this one with the skulls. That one's one of my favorites. And then there's also some that are horizontal as well. The same images but done horizontally. Okay, so those are all the repeating type patterns and then there are the journal pages. I didn't print out all the journal pages because I didn't think I would need them all, but just so you know that there are many more than what I have printed here. Um, so I did mine double sided. I love that there's a lot of cat imagery and, and the ravens as well. So there's a lot that you can do with these. Okay, and then they also have quite a few ephemera pieces. So these pockets I'm definitely going to use. All kinds of things that you could use for um, either swing tabs or um, inserts in the pockets. Some border type strips. Bookmarks. Um, one big file folder and then these are like the actual fussy cut and again I love that they leave a little bit of a border around it so you have a clear line of where you should kind of fussy cut so a lot of great images there and then a few more pieces um, little circles that you could use as swing tabs as well Okay, so that is the collection and like I said, there is more to the collection. I just didn't print it all out. I just printed what I thought I would need. So now I will show you what um, the album looks like that we're going to create today and then we'll get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the project that we'll be making today. So I've got one of the beautiful journaling papers on the front. This was my very favorite one, so I wanted that to be the cover. There's the spine. And the back, just got a simple ribbon closure here. Okay, and open it up. I left the front and back covers fairly simple. Uh, and then in here is one of those corner pockets. I've got some nice big tags. This one has a tuck spot, so you can put a picture in under there. And then that's what they look like on the back. And then this opens up. And then the tags go in to keep th that part of the page closed. And then it also opens like that. Okay, and then page two. So this is magnetized and opens to the side and to that side. And then this opens up like that and then it also opens down like that and then oh no I glued that one down these are both tuck spots so okay and then over here I've 
got a magnetized swing tab and this goes up and this one goes so this one goes down, this one goes up and a tuck spot up there with a little journaling card in there okay and then these also open that way and that way and then you've got a nice big pocket in here I've just got the file folder from the collection in the pocket right now okay and then it also opens up to the full side so you've got like a nice big spot for a page for pictures and then on page four we've got so the pages repeat there's three page designs but then I give you a little bit of extra things that you can do to the pages to make them a little bit different so I've got a pocket on the back of this tag and then another big one and then I tried to match the paper up here and so this opens to the side to the side again another little tiny pocket with some tags in there and then it also opens up and then we've got that pocket so these keep the pocket that uh, keep this whole section closed okay page five um, magnetized swing tab here and this opens up and this opens up and we've got a tuck spot in there but these also swing around so you've got a hidden spot for a photo there and it magnetizes back into place and the same with this one this one magnetizes it's magnetized but it's rolls out of the way so you can put a hidden photo or a message or whatever and that goes back like that and did I miss something here oh yeah this whole this whole part the entire inside I missed <laughs> so so this part opens down and it opens up and up again so it's basically like a very large accordion, right? So it's like, like that. All right, now we can close these up. There we go. And then on the last page, so I've got these little door pulls. So these both open up to reveal one of the journaling cards. Okay, and then this one opens to the left, this one opens to the right, and then on this one I've got a couple extra flaps here that go up and down, and then inside is that big pocket. And then this is uh, left open up here so you can tuck your photo underneath there. So I think it turned out really well. I'm very very happy with it and I hope that you will enjoy this tutorial. We're gonna go over the materials that you'll need and then we'll get going on the tutorial. So um, for adhesives I have both score tape and wet adhesive as well as my ATG gun. So I use the ATG gun uh, for adhering the patterned paper and then for the construction I use a conjunction of both wet glue and score tape. If you only have one or the other that's fine that's you can just use one or the other. Uh, scissors and a ruler and a pen for making marks but I don't have a pen handy. Um, black cardstock um, as well as the pattern paper that you're going to use, um, a paper trimmer, a scoreboard with a scoring tool and a bone folder, um, some chipboard for the covers and some brads and some disc magnets. If you don't have disc magnets um, you can get away with using other 
ways of closing things, swing tabs, ribbon ties, etc. Optionally, um, some Distress Ink and a Distress Ink Dauber. I like to go around the edges of my pattern paper. This is not a necessity, it's just a personal choice. So you can decide whether or not you want to do that. Okay, so that is all the supplies. I'm gonna get this all out of my way and then we will start uh, making the album. All right, so we're gonna create our base pages first. We're gonna have three base pages. So you need to cut three pieces of cardstock that will be your A pieces. And they will measure eight and a half inches by five and three quarter inches. Or if you're using centimeters, it would be 21.5 centimeters by 14.5 centimeters. So those are your A pieces. You'll also need three B pieces and they are nine and a half inches by five and three quarter inches or in centimeters that's 24 centimeters by 14.5. Okay the A pieces we are not going to score but the B pieces we will need to score at half and at nine inches. If you're doing centimeters, it would be 1.25 centimeters and then you can always just flip it around and go 1.25 centimeters again. So do that to all three of your B pieces. And then we are going to add score tape on to those areas that we just scored. So when you score something, there is an indented side and then a raised side of that line. We're gonna put the score tape on the indented side and just make sure not to put your score tape too close to that score line. You want there to be a little itty bitty space between the score line and the score tape. So do that to all three. Okay, and then we're going to miter the corners just a little tiny bit. I'm gonna do them all together since they're all the same size. So we're just going to cut from that score line at a slight angle so that it looks like this on all four corners. Okay, and now we are going to fold and crease all of those score lines. So this is where your bone folder comes in. I'm just gonna use my big one. And the better your lines are creased, the better everything will um, move and fold together. So don't skip this step is what I'm saying. Okie dokie. All right, now we're gonna put pieces A and pieces B together. So we're literally just going to put the B's on top of the A's so that they form a tube shape like that. Now I like to add just a tiny uh, bead of wet adhesive as well, just to make sure that everything is going to stay really well adhered. Um, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Or if you're just using just using wet adhesive, then you would have skipped the step where we added the score tape. But it's the same process. So I'm just doing one end at a time. Just a little bead of glue, just a small bead. And then fold that closed. Okay, so there is your first base page and do the same thing with the other two sets of A and B so that you have three base pages. Okay, so now you have three base pages. So set two of them aside, actually set all three of them aside while we get our pieces ready for page one. Okay, for page one, you'll need three pieces. Your A piece is six and a quarter inches by eight and a half inches. 
and that is 16 centimeters by 21.5 centimeters. Your piece B is five and three quarters by five. So that's 14.5 centimeters by 12.5. And then your piece C, which is technically just a tag, is uh, seven by five and a half, which is 18 centimeters by 14 centimeters. Okay, and uh, now you'll need to cut those pieces out twice because we are going to be uh, doing three page designs and then repeating them. So the first page design will be on page one and page four, and then the second page design will be two and five, and then the third page design will be three and six. Okay, so for each one of these pages that I'm showing you, we'll need to cut out the pieces twice. Okay, so I'm gonna prep them at the same time. We're going to score the A at half on the six and a quarter inch side. So that's 1.25 centimeters on the six and a quarter inch side. The B piece will be scored at half on the five inch side. Okay, and then the C does not need to be scored. Okay, and again, we're going to add score tape to those half inch sections. Again, I'm going to do both um, page one and page four at the same time, just to kind of make things a little bit easier. Okay, and then we are going to miter the corners. So taking off just a little bit off the corner where the score tape is. And the C doesn't need to be mitered because there's no score tape. Okay, and then we are going to fold and crease on those score lines. Okay, bring in your first base page. Okay, so your A piece is going to adhere to the left edge of your base page. Again, I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue and that is going to go on the left edge of your base. Okay, and then your B piece is going to go at the top of your A piece. Okay, so that's that. Now my plan is to cut out and use these two pockets on the bottom of the A piece. So one of them is gonna go here and one of them is gonna go here and that's what our tag will slide into, those two pockets, and it will keep the B piece closed. Okay, you don't have to do that, but that is my plan. But I'm gonna wait until all my pages are done and then I will do the decorating of them. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So I am going to put one magnet though from the back of the A to the base page. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of score tape onto the back side of the A, um, about centered top to bottom and about a half an inch from the edge of the page. I'm going to put two disc magnets magnetized together, another piece of score tape on top of those, and then just fold that closed. And now that is uh, magnetized. All right, so you've got one there, one there. 
All right, perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna get our pieces ready for page two. So for page two, you will need two A pieces. So in total, you'll need four, because we're gonna do this page design twice, okay? And they measure five by five inches. So 12.5 centimeters by 12.5 centimeters. And then your B pieces, you'll need three of them for each page, so six in total. And they measure seven and a half inches by five and three quarters, which is 19 centimeters by 14.5 centimeters. Okay, grab your scoreboard. We are going to score the A pieces at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. So that would be 1.25 centimeters and 1.5 centimeters on any side because it's a square. So just on one of the sides. Okay, so I'm gonna do that to all of my A pieces right off the bat, just so they're, the rest of my pieces are all prepped and ready to go. All right, and then the B pieces, we are going to score at a half an inch or 1.25 on the seven and a half inch side. So all of those will be scored half an inch right there. Okay, so I'm gonna do that to all six of them. Three of these for each page, page two and page five. Okay, we can put our scoreboard away. We're gonna add score tape to the half inch section of all of those pieces. Make sure that your score tape doesn't go into that little tiny gusset that you've created. I hope you can see that gusset. So just make sure that the tape doesn't interfere with it. There retains a small space in between the tape itself and the score lines. Okay, so add your score tape to all the half inch sections. Okay, and then we can miter the corners. And when you're mitering the corners that have that little gusset, just go to the outer, like the first score line that you did, the half inch. Okay, I'm gonna do the other ones while I have them out here. Okay, and then fold and crease all of those score lines. Uh, do both, make sure you, you uh, crease both the half inch and the 5 8 inch score line on your A's. Okay, I'm just gonna do the other set off camera and then we will put page two together. 
Okay, so grab that base page that you just finished. The, we've got the page one here. Okay, flip it over and we are going to adhere your A pieces centered top to bottom on the left and right edge of the base like that. Okay, so one here and one here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. If you would like to measure it exactly, feel free. Um, but I tend to just eyeball things. I think, I think my eyeballs are fairly accurate. <laughs> okay, so one there. And one on the other side and make sure that they're lined up with each other. Okay, so now we've got our A pieces there. All right, now our B pieces. So we're going to adhere them in an accordion fashion. So the first one is going to go at the top of the base. So it's going to sit right in between those A pieces. So that's the first one. Now the second one, we are going to adhere it to the bottom of the first one. Get it as straight as possible so everything closes all nice and straight and well and <laughs> that was a very good English. <laughs> Just try to get it as straight as you can. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, and then this third one is going to go at the top of the second one. Okay, so now you've got a pullout that looks like that. So it's in a big accordion like that. Okay, and then the A pieces fold all nice and neat over top of that. Now apparently my eyeballs weren't quite as good as I thought they were because these A pieces should be pretty close to the bottom of this. So my eyeballs aren't quite as good as I thought they were. Oh well. <laughs> so these should be, I mean, if you want to, you can put down the, um, the B pieces first and then put the A pieces on and the A, the bottoms of the A should uh, come to pretty much the edge of the, the bottom edge of the Bs. So on the next one, I will do it better. Um, <laughs> so, uh, my plan for this one is to use a magnetic closure, but it's going to be one of the cut aparts is going to be my magne magnetic closure. So I'm just going to leave this one without any magnets until I do the decorating process. Okay, so now we can move on to the uh, measurements for page three. Okay, so for page three, you're going to need uh, two A pieces that measure four and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches, which is 10.5 by 16 centimeters. So you'll need two of those for each page, so four all together. The B's, again, you will need two for this page and two for page six, so four all together. And they measure five and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. So that's 14.5 centimeters by 12 centimeters. And then one C piece for each page, so two all together. And it measures six and three quarters by seven, which is 17 centimeters by 17.5. Okay, so get all of those cut and then grab your scoreboard. The A pieces we are going to score at half an inch on the six and a quarter inch side. So again, if you're using centimeters, um, that is 
1.25 centimeters on the uh, 16 centimeter side. I get so confused by centimeters. Centimeters is not really my jam. <laughs> Okay, so that's the A's. The B's, we are going to score at half on the four and three quarter inch side. And again, I'm scoring all the pieces for page three and the repeating pattern of page six. Okay, and then your C piece is going to be scored at half an inch on the seven inch side. And then we're gonna rotate it a quarter turn or 90 degrees. And we are going to score again at half and six and a quarter. So you want there to be a half an inch on three sides, okay? Okay, put your scoreboard away, and once again, we are going to add score tape to all of the half inch sections. And on the C piece, this is going to be a large pocket, so we're going to put score tape on all three sides where we did the score lines. And we're going to miter this one just a little bit differently. Okay, so let's do the A's and the B's first. Okay, so like we've been doing, we're just going to cut just a little bit off at an angle. That's the A's. I'm just doing them together because they're the same, so it's just easier. It's the B's and then the C. So on the uh, open end here, just like normal. Now, when you have the intersecting uh, score lines, you're going to cut in until you reach that point where the two intersect, and then you're going to kind of angle your scissors and cut out. So it forms like just a slight angle there, like that. Almost a curve. Okay, and get rid of all those biddies, and then fold and crease all of those score lines. And I'm gonna do both the pages, um, and then come right back. Okay, now grab your second base page, and we will put um, our pieces on. So, we are going to take our two A pieces, so these ones here. One is a, going to adhere to the top left of the base page. The other one will adhere to the bottom right of the base page. Now, if you wanted to switch it up, these could both go on the same side, but I think it looks cooler if they're opening opposite directions. But um, that would be an option as well. All right. Just like that. So you've got one opening to that way and one opening to that way. And then our B pieces are going to adhere to the top of the top A and the bottom of the bottom A. But again, if you wanted, you could have them both on the top so that they both flipped up, or you could have them like this so they both flip 
up and down or you could also have them so that they both flip up like that but I don't know if that's a super good way to do it but well, I mean you can do it but there's options is what I'm trying to say personally I'm going to put this first one at the top of the top A so that it flips up and to the side. You could also have these on the inside of these A pieces. There's many, many options. And then this other one I'm going to put on the bottom of the bottom A so that it folds down. But feel free to try any of those other ways. So this one will go down and open to the side. Okay. If your pieces are interfering with each other, they should be able to both open and close at the same time. If they seem to be interfering with each other, you can always trim a little sliver off. But they should fit perfectly. Okay, so those are your A's and your B's. Your C piece, we're going to open both of these up. And your C piece is going to be a pocket um, onto the base. Now I just do a dry fit first and make sure, we just want to make sure that both of these are going to close properly. This is a really tight fit, so if you find that it's too tight, you can always bring in your scoreboard again and just make one of your sides, just move the side in a little bit by just scoring one more tick over. My trimmer isn't very good anymore and I can't see half of the numbers, so I think I might have made it a little bit big. But that is the way that you can fix it and then you will just refold, recrease that edge. I'm just going to re-trim this a little bit as well. Okay, so I just added one more eighth of an inch score line and now it will fit in there with no trouble at all. Okay, so. Now I like with pockets, I like to do my sides first and then fold the bottom up so that it hits the corners and adheres there just uh, makes it so it's a smoother entrance for your tags. Okay, and then a little bit of glue. And that just goes right down onto your base page. Just like that. And then those will close up like that. Now you can have magnets going from the back of your A's onto your pocket. I'm going to leave that for now and I might add magnets in the decorating process. So now we've got your three page designs. Okay, so now you are going to repeat those three page designs with four, five, and six. So you'll start again, you'll flip this one over and do design one and then so forth. Um, so I'm going to do those off screen because we've already gone over all the designs. And then I'm going to show you a few ways that you can step up the pages if you would like a little extra oomph. Okay, so we've got our pages created. So this is our page one with the flap and there will be pockets down there and it opens to the side. And then our page two with our two flaps here and our large accordion. And then three with our flaps that go up and down and side to side and then a large pocket. Right, and then those designs repeat one, two, and three. So, in case there was someone who wanted to make this even fancier, um, 
I've got some uh, one or two elements that you can add to each one of the page designs to um, just kind of amp them up a little bit. So for uh, the first page design, you could also cut a piece that is four and a half inches by six and three quarter inches, which is 11.5 centimeters by 17 centimeters, and then cut two pieces that are four and a half inches by six and a quarter inches, or 11.5 centimeters by 16 centimeters, and then we'll get our scoreboard. Zuri's decided to come help. <laughs> so we will score that first piece at... <laughs> You're in my way, buddy. <laughs> Okay, we'll score the first piece at half on the four and a half inch side, and then we're gonna rotate it and score it at half and six and a quarter. So this is going to be um, an actual pocket. So instead of using one of these kind of corner pockets, this is just an alternative to create a, a full pocket um, for that page. Okay, and then the other pieces we will score at half and the six and a quarter inch side for both of them. Okay, so let's put these alternatives onto our page four. All right, so I'm just gonna add my score tape. We're gonna do the same process that we did for all the other pieces, adding the score tape and mitering the corners. Okay, and then I'm just gonna miter the corners. Um, keep in mind that all the pieces that I'm going to be showing you now are very much optional. Um, you can just stick with the page designs the way they are. I just wanted to give you some uh, options for making it even more fancy. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, the, the curved pocket on page one. So I'm gonna move on to page four to do, all right. And this is going to be a pocket that goes at the very bottom of the base page. Okay, and then again, a little bit of glue. Okay, and it should fit perfectly so that this still opens. And then our other two pieces, we're going to put on either side of this B piece. So one opens to the left and one opens to the right. Now if you wanted to, you could put one of these elements on the first page one design and then the second one the second element on this the you know the repeating page one design or you could do both of these things on both of them. Um, I just I want to give you as many options as I can for kind of making things your own, you know? And if you find that uh, these are a little bit tight, like they don't want to close properly, then you can just trim a smidge off one of them and that will fix the problem. Okay, so now we are going to do um, an extra element for the second page design. Okay, so for the page two extra element, we are going to cut two pieces that are four and a quarter inches by five inches, which is 10.5 by 12.5, I believe. And we are going to attach them onto our A pieces 
uh, via a brad. So I'm just going to kind of place it on there and then punch a hole with my crocodile in the top right corner. And then put a brad in there. I mean, you can do it in the top left corner if you want or have it down here so it swings down. Totally your choice. Now I'm going to put a brad in for now just to hold it there. But when we put the pattern paper uh, on, we will have to take the brad off to put the pattern paper on. Okay, so now that swivels out of the way. Same with over here. We're just going to place that on and then uh, for this one I'm going to put the hole in the upper left hand corner and place a brad okay and so now that also swings all right, and so for adding magnets to this, if you decide to do this, um, we're going to put one piece, a little piece of score tape, somewhere over here, and then we're going to have one single magnet go there, and then we're going to let, so from the underside of this, we're going to let that magnet find its buddy through the paper. And then we're going to put another little piece of score tape on that single magnet. And then we're going to line things up and press it down. So now you've got a magnet on the front part where you'll be putting pattern paper. And then when you swing it out of the way, um, this is another place where pattern paper will grow. But this way, if you don't want to, you don't have to put pattern paper on the back side of this because you're not really going to see it. So we're going to do the same thing over here. It's a little bit early in the morning, so my brain is still uh, trying to get the caffeine working. <laughs> so I feel like my words aren't completely uh, altogether ready to face the world yet. <laughs> okay, so just doing the same process with those magnets on the other side. All right, and there we go. And we will finish the rest of that page later. I'm just going to show you one element that we can do for your final page, which is page six. So if you do decide to do this, it's going to be a waterfall. So it would be five pieces that are five and a half inches long by four and three quarter inches long, which is 14 centimeters by 12 centimeters. And each one would be scored um, at half on the four and three quarter inch side. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to add our score tape and miter our corners like we normally would. Okay, so we've got score tape on the half inch sections. We've got our corners mitered. Now we're going to grab our page here and we're going to start by putting the first piece right at the top of the pocket. So here's the lip of the pocket, so we're going to put it right at that lip. Okay, and the second one I'm going to put at the bottom of the page, just 
just like this. And this will fold up and over the whole waterfall. Okay, but if you didn't, I mean, if you didn't want to do a whole waterfall, you could just, just do that. That is also fine. Um, alternatively, you can put your next piece right there. Let me bring you in a little bit so you can see closer. Okay, so your next piece could go right underneath the half inch section of the first. Okay, and then the piece after that would go underneath the half inch section of that one, right? And so forth. I might just leave it at that actually. So I'm just gonna go like that and like that. I might add a couple of these to the other page three actually as well. Yeah, I might do that. <laughs> but keep in mind these are all, all of those pieces are all optional. So you could stop right after you've got the basic page designs and then start decorating. So speaking of the decorating, I've got um, a rough plan of what I'm going to do. I am going to put most of my papers on off camera because that's what's going to take a long time and I don't want this video to be three hours long. So I'm going to put most of my papers on and then whenever I have a swing tab or a magnet that needs to be added or something like that, then I will come back and show you what I'm doing. Um, so anyone unfamiliar to matting um, uh, papers, all you have to do is take the area that you're wanting to put the paper, the area you're wanting to mat, cut a piece of paper, pattern paper that is um, just slightly smaller, both lengthwise and widthwise, and that's it. So you have a tiny little border of black all the way around, and that's all you have to do. Okay, so I'm going to start getting some of my papers on um, off camera, and then I'll come back to you and show you all the little bits and bobs that um, we will do to do the closures and such. Okay, so I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I'm going to go through the pages one by one and show you what I've done and do any extra little bits that need doing. So um, I used that one corner pocket here. I did back it on some black cardstock just to make it a little bit stronger and I did cut it down a little bit just so this flap here would um, open no problem. And then this is what I've got as the tag and just white with a little bit of uh, one of the pieces of paper up there. And then when you open it up, it looks like that. I used, this is a strip from one of the pieces of paper, or maybe it was from the ephemera. And then this is a journaling paper. And then on the inside, so this just goes back in there to close that. And then on the inside, I've got these journaling papers. They're just, the journaling papers are just gorgeous. Okay, so that's page one. So everything is pretty straightforward. And you can definitely, you know, pause the video and do exactly as I've done. Um, in the paper, but you could also just do your own thing. The decorating is where you can show your own personality and you can use different papers and, and you know, kind of do your own thing and make it your own. Okay, so on page two, I've got this pretty rose paper on the front parts, um, but I want, I haven't glued this one down yet because I want to have this be the closure, this heart image to be the closure. Okay, so I've already backed it on some black chipboard. So I've put two magnets that are magnetized together right there. I'm gonna put another tiny piece of score tape over top of that second magnet. And then I'm going to line it up where I want it to go, so centered. Right about there, just to get that magnet adhered right there. Now I want to cover up this magnet, so I've got this little strip of paper here that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to put some score tape on that. I'm 
while I have the score tape out, I'm just gonna put a little bit of score tape over top of that magnet just to make sure it stays where I want it to go. Now I'm gonna put this piece covering the magnet on the little ephemera piece. Okay, just like that. And now I'm gonna kind of mark where I want this to be adhered. So I'm gonna put um, wet adhesive all over this back side here from that mark. So I made it really small so only I can see it. Okay, so I've got some adhesive on there. Now I'm just gonna let it kind of find its magnet buddy there. Okay, and now we can put some pattern paper on this part. And if you remember, I wasn't quite, uh, I was a little bit off on where I uh, put my piece um, in the beginning, so I just made these uh, pieces that I'm covering it with slightly longer just to kind of make up for that and make it look like it's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> okay, so put this one on and then on the inside I'm just going to have white. Okay, so there, now that is closed. Okay, so now on the inside, uh, one of the beautiful journaling pieces, and then when you fold it down, this is what I've got. I wanted there to be a lot of space for photos, so there is quite a bit of white on this area, and then just a little bit of cutting apart some of the papers, and then when you lift it up this way, journaling card or journaling paper at the top and then some paper piecing down here and then when you lift this part up more of the ephemera some more white another journaling paper and then you close it all back up like so and that is your page two okay page three um, so I used this gorgeous skull paper. Now I want to use this as the closure. I've got a magnet underneath this piece. Okay, so I've got, I cut this piece out, backed it on black cardstock, and then I've put a magnet and then put this piece on. Okay, so there's one single magnet in there. And now I want to put the opposing magnet right here. Okay, so there it is right there. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of score tape here. And position it where I want it to go. Which is right about there. Okay. And now I'm going to make a mark right here because I'm going to put a brad right here so this can be a swing tab. So I'm going to punch a hole through both this piece here and the piece below it. I'm actually going to use my crocodile, I think, to punch a better hole in this. And now I do already have pattern paper on the back side, but I will show you what I'm going to do in a second. Okay, so I'm going to grab a brad and put it through this tag and through this top piece and open the tines on the back. 
put a little piece of score tape over these tines and then I'm just gonna use one of the ephemera pieces and cover up those tines with a piece of um, ephemera. Alright, so there's that and then it just swings out of the way to open this. So now we can put this piece of pattern paper on. Alright, and now I'll show you all the rest of it. So open this up, more white for photos down there, and then one of the pieces of paper that I just kind of cut apart, because I really like this image and I didn't want to mess with it. And then this goes to the side, and this goes to the side, and then here we have our big pocket. I don't have a tag in the pocket as of yet, but I will do that in the final stages, and then just white over here. Okay, so that is page three. All right, and then we flip it over, and so page four, page four is pretty much the same as page one. The only difference is that I did a full pocket down here, and I've got two tags in that pocket. Okay, and then got kind of the continuation of this piece from the top to the bottom and then white there and then that lifts up and then we've got our pocket and then you open this up oh I've got it backwards and I don't have any paper on this I realized <laughs> okay I'm gonna put this on this side uh, cut a piece of this rose paper to put in the center and then have white here and here I'm going to take my ink dauber and just ink up the edges just a little bit just so you don't see that white core of the paper. Alright, and there is your page four. And we've got the tags that go in the pocket. Just like that. Okay. And then page five, which is the same design as page two. Get all my little bits here. Okay, so this is the one where we're going to do a swivel action. Okay, so I've got pattern paper on the front of these two pieces, but not on the back. The magnet find its because we already put magnets there. So now I'm going to put a, another uh, hole through this uh, patterned paper. And put this on there. Okay, fabulous. And now we'll also need to put a hole through this piece. So I'm going to just do that from the back side. Okay, and now we can put our bread through. Okay, and now I'm going to put some score tape on over the top of these tines just so they don't come out. Okay, and now we can put pattern paper on the inside of this and then we can do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so there's one side and now we're going to do the same on the other side. So actually I'm going to put my pattern paper on here first, I think, and then cut the hole through both. Okay, and now I'm going to cut the hole up in this corner here. Um, I think I'm going to go from the back side just so I can see where the original hole was. 
little bit off, but that's okay. And then I'm going to put my brad on. And open the tines on the other side. Put some score tape over them. Okay, now before I put pattern paper here, I also want to do a swing tab. Okay, so I'm going to use this piece here as a swing tab. This cool book with things coming out of it. So I'm just going to place it where I want it and then poke a hole through both it and the piece underneath it, just the swivel part. Okay, and then I'm going to put a brad through that. Okay, so I've got a brad going through both of those pieces. Open the tines on the back of the swivel part. Okay, and then put some score tape on the back of those tines just to keep them in place. Okay, and now when we swivel that around, it keeps everything closed. You can put a magnet here if you so desire to. Um, but then you would have to figure out something to cover it up. So now I can put the pattern paper on these parts. I'm just going to remove the score tape. So I did add magnets as well. Um, they're just slightly off center. Um, so that I could put this, um, the brad through the center. So the magnets are slightly off center so the brad can be in center. But again, that is just a design choice. You don't have to do that. Okay, so that's that one, and then we'll put the pattern paper on the inside of this bottom one. Okay, fabulous. And then these open to the sides. And this is the pattern paper that I've got there. I accidentally put this a little too far over. You can see the magnet, but that's all right. It's, it is what it is. There's that big pocket here. And then here is where I added a couple extra flaps. And just to let you know that I did put a magnet here, closing these two flaps. And the alternative is to have a full waterfall, if you so desire, or nothing at all. Um, I chose to just do two flaps instead of a full waterfall, but um, now you have options. Okay, so I'm just going to cover up that magnet here, and then I'll use some ephemera later on to cover up that magnet there, and put some things in the pockets, and that is your page six. All right, so those are all your pages. And now we are going to um, make our cover and then do our binding system, put our pages into the album, and then we'll be done. Okay, so for the cover, you're going to need two pieces of chipboard that measure nine inches by six and a quarter inches. In centimeters, 23 by 16, so you need two of those. The spine piece is going to be 9 by 2.5, so that is 23 centimeters by 6.5. So those are your chipboard pieces. I do have score tape already on the backs of them. And then for cardstock, 
you're going to need two pieces of cardstock that are 11 inches by 10 inches. Uh, so that is 28 centimeters by 25.5 centimeters. Okay, so we need to overlap them on the long side, so the 11 inch side. So I am going to do three lines of score tape and a little bit of wet adhesive and then I'm going to stick them together Okay, and here's where you're going to see um, me as I messed up. <laughs> I put, accidentally put all the adhesive on the wrong side. I put it on the short side instead of the long side. So here is me admitting that I screwed up. <laughs> all right, but it's okay because this can still work out fine. All right, now we're gonna put each of our pieces down and we want there to be at least an inch all the way around, okay? Okay, so here's the first piece, making sure there's at least an inch all the way around and adhere that down and then the spine piece is gonna go down here and I wanna leave about a quarter of an inch space in between the two chipboard pieces. And that will make it so that there is room when thing, when it folds, there's room for those uh, chipboard pieces to move and not hit each other. Okay, so about a quarter of an inch space. Okay, and then I'll put the last one down right here. Okay, there we go. And I have a little bit excess over here, so I'm just going to trim it off a little bit. And I'm not too worried if it's really straight or not because it's going to get covered up with pattern paper so you won't see it. Okay. Now I'm going to put score tape all the way around the perimeter of this. And because I already have the, the adhesive there, I don't need any there. So. Yeah, that's why I wasn't panicking that I had it there because I was going to put adhesive there anyway. So I was just a step ahead of myself. Okay, so now I'm just going to miter all my corners here. So I'm just going to cut in at an angle and out at an angle, just like you would um, a pocket. And then I'm going to wrap my whole cover around my chipboard. Okay, so I'm going to start with this top one since it's already got the adhesive up there. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of bend it over starting in the center and then move my way out. And just keep rubbing it. Use your bone folder. Okay, and then I'm going to do the other long end. Okay, 
and now I'm just going to take my bone folder and just kind of tuck in these corners a little bit and then we'll do the sides. So once you have all four uh, sides curved around your chipboard, just take a ruler or something and just kind of help these to bend. All right, and there is your basic cover right there. So now we are going to do our binding system and then we can put our pages in. So for your binding system, you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches by 8 and a quarter inches, so 28 centimeters by 21 centimeters. And on the 11 inch side, we are going to score it. Now, bear with me because this is going to be quite a few score marks. So, in inches first, 1 and 7 eighths, 2, 2 and a half three and a quarter, four, four and three quarters, five and a half, six and a quarter, seven, seven and three quarters, eight and a half, nine, nine and an eighth. Okay, so in centimeters, it doesn't translate perfectly, but as close as I can get is four and a half, five, six and a half, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen and a half, twenty one and a half, twenty three, twenty three and a half. So that's centimeters. Okay? So you can put your scoreboard away. Okay, and now flip it over so that the um, raised area is showing, the raised, the bumps. And we're going to start with the two center um, sections, okay? So I'm going to put some score tape here on the one of the center sections. Like on either, and it's, there's like a center line. Uh, on one side of that, I'm going to put that uh, a piece of square tape, and then I'm going to fold this closed so that those two three-quarter inch sections are going to adhere together, and then I'm going to fold back on the next two three-quarter inch sections. Okay, so now you've got this one part poking out. Okay, so flip it over again, and now we're going to skip one on each side and then put score tape on the next one. So skip one and then score tape. Okay, so in the center is where that flange thing is now. So leave these two blank and then put score tape on these two. Okay, and now the one on the farthest side is going to fold together to meet that score tape. Okay, so leave this, leave the one alone that's right at the center, but we're going to fold this part kind of closed and then fold this back again. Okay, so now we've got two flanges. Okay, so now it looks like that. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. 
So I'm turning, I'm just turning it around just so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so I've got the score tape there and I'm just going to fold this part over to adhere those two three quarter inch sections together and then I'm going to fold it back. Okay, so now I've got three flanges. Okay, so it should look like that. Okay, and now I'm just going to fold these two little lines up. Okay, and then this is going to adhere right onto our cover, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to put adhesive all over the back of this, both score tape and wet adhesive. Take the backing off and add a little bit of wet adhesive. Okay, and now we're going to flip it over and try and line it up as centered as you can. So those two little gussets should meet where the um, album is going to fold. Okay, it should meet those two creases. Just run your fingers like through each of the parts of it. Okay, and grab your ruler again and kind of fold, refold things so that the, it knows where it's supposed to fold. Show it who's boss. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now we've got our binding system, we've got our cover, and now I'm just going to add some score tape to each side of each of these flanges and then trim off the corner and then we can add our pages. So when you're adding the score tape to these flanges don't go all the way to the very base of the spine. Um, that's why I did it three quarters of an inch so put the score tape up near the top of the flange but not uh, towards the base because we're not going to put our page in all the way so that it's touching the spine. We want there to be a little bit of space there so it has um, a, a better chance of laying flat and it will just move better if it's not right against the spine because then that if it's right against the spine it just doesn't uh, have the mobility that we want it to have. Okay, so there's some score tape on each of those, and now I'm literally just gonna just gonna trim off a little bit at an angle off of each of these. This just helps the pages to slide in better. It's not like an absolute essential thing. It just kind of helps with the ease of putting the pages in. Okay. Fantastic. So now make sure your pages are in the correct order and right side up and all that jazz. And we're going to find the center of each one and we're just going to slide it onto the flange. And I am going to put a little bit of wet adhesive on these as well. Okay, so I've got adhesive just at the oops, the top 
kind of section. There's a space between the adhesive and the actual base of the spine there. Now I'm just going to find the center of the page and just slide it onto the flange. And now before you let it adhere, make sure it's centered top to bottom and make sure it's not all the way down. You want there to be a bit of space. Okay, and then when you've got it in the place you want it, then we're going to push down. Okay, and then we're going to do the next one. I kind of like to clip mine until they're really secure and the glue is dry. So I'm just going to put clips on the either end of my each of my pages as I do them. Okay. Okay, make sure everything's right side up. I have actually put pages together upside down before. <laughs> okay, make sure it's even with the one next to it. I don't know if you can see that space. It's like a space right here between the actual page and the base. I hope you can see it. Okay, and then just add the third one. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit for a while until everything is very well adhered and then I will uh, finish up the cover. Okay, so my pages have had a chance to dry. I can remove my clips and now we will just finish off the cover and then we'll have to add some paper in between the pages here and then do any uh, extra embellishing, do the front and back covers on the inside. Um, you don't have to add a closure, but I have this purple ribbon that I really, really like. So I think I'm gonna just use it and do a simple ribbon closure. So I'm just gonna cut a couple lengths of ribbon. You can always trim them shorter afterwards. Okay, and I'm just going to put some Actually, you know what, I'm just going to use my ATG gun and I'm going to kind of go in the center, I think that's center, close enough. <laughs> Alright, and then just put the ribbon onto that adhesive, just make sure the, the adhesive doesn't go all the way to the very, very edge. Yeah, now we're going to put one on the back side as even as we can with the one on the front. Okay, and now we can add our pattern paper to our front and our back covers. Um, I used the purple ribbon because I wanted to use this journaling card, or I guess that's, I don't even know what you call them. Anyway, this, this piece, um, because this is my favorite image of the entire collection, so I wanted that to be my cover. So I'm going to 
put that on. I've backed it on both purple and black so it's got some um, kind of dimension to it almost. Just going to change my ATG tape here. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that I'm right side up and everything. Okay, perfect. So this is going to go down. Fabulous. On the back cover, I'm going to have a similar piece. That's what I've got on the spine. And I'm just going to trim this ribbon a tiny bit here. And so I'm just going to have this piece on the back side. And I've backed it with black and teal. Okay, fabulous. And yeah, now you just have to add some pattern paper to your inside covers and do all your finishing touches, add some more embellishments. There's so many embellishments in this kit that I'm definitely going to use some more of them. And there you have it. That is our Edgar Allan Poe tutorial using the Victoria Designs paper. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it wasn't too confusing adding those extra elements for you. I just want there to be lots of options. I'm a, I'm a big fan of options. <laughs> All right, so there it is. And I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. And I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.